Welcome back. Now, DeMarva, Delmarva Christian won the boys' Easy Egg Championship. Would they get the girls' crown as well? Yeah, could they go two for two tonight? Well, let's find out. They face St. Peter's and Paul. St. Peter and Paul would be in control early in this one. They get the uh, teardrop bucket to fall. Now the Royals would stay in this one throughout as they get a mid-range jump shot to go right here, rattling that one home. These two teams staying pretty close with each other throughout, but Delmarva Christian not able to catch and tie this thing up. What spelled doom for the Royals in this one was sloppy turnovers, missed shot opportunities, and the Sabres would cherry pick almost every pass in the second half. Yeah, and the Royals would try to go with a hurry up offense when none of their shots would fall. Senior Ainsley Bell would knock down some late three pointers, but it just was too little too late. In the end, it was the Sabres who would come out on top. St. Peter and Paul takes down Delmarva Christian to win the Easy Act Championship. So the Marvel Christian goes one for two. The boys win, the girls lose. And the girls lose 46 to 35. All right, I just looked it up. St. Peter and Paul is in Easton. So, oh, okay. and they're the Sabres. Oh, yes. I learned something tonight. Let's catch you up on some of the top teams in the Henlopen and girls basketball. Cape Henlopen has won 18 straight. They finished 14 0 against the Henlopen North. Woodbridge finishing the season 14 0 in the Henlopen South. So that sets up Cape and Woodbridge in the title game. Meanwhile, a couple standout teams early college 15 and 3, and Polytech. 14 and 5 so far on the season. Now to a fantastic game, our other game of the week. This time on the girls side, Warren White's Park side Rams and Scott Kurtz's Decatur Seahawks. The top two squads in the Bayside South besides the Y High Tribe. Now Decatur was off and running ahead by 11 in the third quarter, but the Rams never quit. Zion Smith is a player and she single-handedly dragged Parkside back into the game in the second half. Smith again from downtown. Parkside was going down, was down just four in the fourth quarter. Rams were lethal from downtown. Diamond Dixon with the pose. The Rams make it a one possession game. Nothing but net, but the chance to take the lead was in the Rams hand right there with 20 seconds ago. And let's see if they could do it to Leah Clark with the shot. But it just rims out the layup. Just goes off. She goes to the line, though. Fans willing Clark on. She sinks both free throws. Parkside takes the lead for the first time since the first quarter. Uh, for, since the first quarter, the Rams look like they can win this game. And who else but Smith with the steal on the inbounds pass to end things? Parkside storms all the way back to win this one, and their fans storm in the court because they know how big of a win it is for the Rams. Look at them dancing. Yeah, a lot of emotion in this game. They really wanted that game and they came all the way back and won it. Congratulations to the Rams. Now Decatur and Y High girls finishing with the same record this year, both overall and in the Bayside South, but we will be treated to Decatur and Kent Island this Tuesday at 6 p.m. at the Civic Center. So we figured that this is what the Bayside title game would come down to, right? Yep. Beginning of the season, I think a lot of people had the Bayside Conference title game as Kent Island versus Decatur. Fantastic last year as well. Kent Island was. Decatur was the best team this year. Uh, I think the loss of Nadia Bullock has really been evident this year for the Seahawks. Uh, Decatur is a great team, but we've seen both Y High and Parkside go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them this season. Didn't expect that. Uh, Kent Island got on people's radar last year, though, during yep. the uh, regional semis when they beat Kendall Moxie and undefeated Queen Anne's last year in the yep. regional semis. Uh, they have a lot of returning players. They went 20-0 for a reason. Uh, this is more of a show-me game for Decatur than it is for Kent Island in my eyes. Yeah, I mean, Kent Island's undefeated, so there's really nothing that you else that you can expect from them except for them to turn up and be great at the Civic Center. Boys and girls, uh, and they're the only undefeated team in the Bayside, both boys and girls. Now, the Bayside South had a top three in Decatur, Y High and Parkside kind of battling out mm -hmm. and obviously Decatur is the one that came out on top and Kent Island again they won every single game but they've won every single game by double digits I mean they had a they've been great point, this year they had a 90 point win in this game at St. Michael's 94 to 4 now there is a litmus why test. are you gonna put St. Michael's on blast like <laughs> I mean that. when you win Come by on. 90 we have to give them a shout out now there is a litmus test for both of these squads the tribe why highs played both of these teams they split with Decatur, beating them a week ago. Ken Island played Y High at the beginning of the year, doubling them up 62 to 36. So the Seahawks, they're going to be in for a fight, but Ken Island, I think, is going to be the favorites, and they should be. I'll, I'll take Ken Island in that one. Now, we had some warm, wet weather earlier today, but that quickly faded into a sharp cold. We'll check in with Chief Meteorologist Rich Wardzik for a look at your weekend forecast. Plus, one local museum forced to relocate their exhibits due to a critical HVAC failure at their current venue. We'll have the latest coming up next.
I'm Warren White, head girls basketball coach at Parkside High School, and you're watching Delmarva Sports Insider.